Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Great American Stampin' Show. My name is Jody Reinert, and I am so glad that you are here on my Stampin' Jody YouTube channel to join us in this competitive stamping game that we play. Um, the focus on this episode, we are in season two, I believe episode six. The focus today is embossing paste. This is what embossing paste looks like. Now, if you've ever played that game, Never Have I Ever, um, you will appreciate the fact never have I ever opened this until today. Never have I ever used embossing paste in any way. Never have I ever Googled how to use embossing paste or watch a video that would maybe give me some tips and tricks. So what I've got for you today is just kind of an experiment. I do like what I ended up with, but let me tell you, I had I just kind of made it up as I went along. I didn't know in advance what I was doing. So hopefully you can tune into this, learn from what I did, and then learn from Julie and Shannon and Brandy as well. I know they're going to have a lot of creative ideas to share with you. So um, I hope that you enjoy this and have fun. And I would love to hear if you have used embossing paste and maybe some of the things that you've done with it, because this is a whole new thing to me. All right, enjoy. All right, then today is all about embossing paste. And as I shared, brand new thing to me. So um, we are going to go ahead and get started. I, I, you're just going to have to bear with me here because I'm hoping that I have everything I need and that it turns out like I'm hoping it does. Okay, so I have got basic white cardstock. This is um, thick basic white and I've scored it down the center. So I will fold on that line, use my bone folder to get my good crisp fold. And then I have a piece also basic, uh, thick basic white that is four inches by five and a quarter. And then I have this little tiny piece that I die cut with the nested essentials die. So with the smallest one there. So it looks pretty exciting, right? Three layers of white. Well, let's watch how this will be transformed. I'm gonna set these pieces aside for a moment. Um, I'm going to pull in this punch that I'm using and one of our window sheets. So as I said, I don't own a mask. So it's kind of hard to use embossing paste, I think, without a mask. So what I'm gonna do is create my own mask by using a window sheet. So I just popped that out and you can see I could get creative and do something with these plastic hearts that punched out. I'm going to set them aside for now because I think I've used up all my creativity for one day coming up with this project. Um, but you can see the mask that I've got there. I'm just going to take my scissors and cut so that I just have a smaller piece to work with. I might cut just a bit on this side too. That'll just give me a little more flexibility in how I want to use my homemade mask. So this piece here, I am going to, sorry, I've got so many different little things around me. Um, I'm gonna pull in my colors. You may be familiar with bubble bath. You may be familiar with Fresh Freesia. You may be familiar with Berry Burst. But the fourth color I'm using today is brand new. It's called Petunia Pop, and it's an in color for the 2024-2026 years. So this is brand new. It literally just arrived by UPS today. So I'm going to use a combination of these four colors and a blending brush. So this piece of thick basic white is about to be transformed. So let me get all of these opened up and I'm just going to do a progression of color starting with the lightest bubble bath and working all the way through to berry burst. So I will just rub my blending brush on the ink pad and then I'm going to start off of the scrap paper just, or excuse me, off of the basic white just a little bit to kind of avoid, like if I touch it like this directly, it might get some weird actual shapes. And my goal is to just have a smooth blended color. So it's it's okay if you get a little 
a little bit of lines or shapes on there, but we'll, we'll start with that goal in mind anyhow. So this is bubble bath, and I'm just gonna do that top left corner. I can rub off on my scrap paper if I want to. It's such a light color, there's nothing really coming off. I'm going to move to Fresh Freesia, pick up some ink, kind of start off and blend over. And they, they look pretty different as I pull it in here, but the beauty of using a blending brush and yes, I know this is supposed to be about embossing paste. We will get there. But what's fun about the blending brush is kind of right here where the colors come together, I can just go over that and I'm almost creating a third color in there. We've got the bubble bath, we've got the fresh freesia, and then we've got that blended color right in the middle. Okay, I'll rub off the little bit of excess and now I'm going to that brand new Petunia Pop. This is a very um, wet ink pad because of how new it is. So I'll be a little bit more careful with that. And just kind of pop some color off on the scrap paper. And we'll do that same thing where we kind of blend the colors. These are very similar in color. I hope that you can notice the difference. Um, like I said, Petunia Pop is a brand new color and as we use it more and use Fresh Freesia and Petunia Pop together, I think you'll differentiate between the two of them more and more. Okay, I'm liking the way that's looking. And then finally, I'm going to pull in Berry Burst. It's pretty wet too. And this will just come down in this corner. The Berry Burst has a little bit more of a red undertone to it that I think you can see coming through there. And then I'll just blend the Berry Burst and the Petunia Pop. And we've got this gorgeous progression of color. Bubble Bath, Fresh Freesia, Petunia Pop, and Berry Burst. So now that plain old basic white paper. Looks a little more interesting now that we've blended some ink on there. So now it's time for embossing paste. Ready or not. Okay, what I did learn in my brief time of playing with embossing paste this afternoon is that I'm going to want this to be completely dry. And so because I just applied all that ink, it is a little bit wet. Um, it's not like it would come off a ton on my hand if I rubbed it on the scrap paper. A teeny bit comes off, but I just found that it's best to kind of set this aside for a moment and just let it dry a little bit. So I'm going to pull in this other piece that I did earlier, although I like the new one better. Do you see the color? I like how dark, Let me let me just see if I can pull that in and make it a little darker here. Maybe, or maybe just don't worry about it and move on. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna use this one because it's dry and set that one aside for now. Okay, now, here we go. All right, so this is embossing paste. You can get this set of tools to use with your embossing paste. This is the one I'm going to use, so I'm just gonna kinda stir some of it up a little bit and a little goes a long way. It's like kindergarten and Elmer's glue, a dot does a lot. A little goes a long way. Uh, so I'm gonna pull in my heart um, mask and I'm going to set it just up in this corner. Now you could use like washi tape or something to hold it in place. I'm just gonna use my fingers and it'll be fine. Um, okay, so I'm going to apply the embossing paste. I don't want it to be too thick because that just means it takes longer to dry. So I'm just going over it. And then I'm going to intentionally do some strokes like this. Okay, ready for the magic? We'll lift that off and we've got a heart. It's pretty cool. It's got texture. It's got a, it adds a little bit of depth. Obviously, if I did it thicker, it would add a lot more depth. 
So I'm going to do another one here, scoop up a little bit of this paste and hold it in place and just go across. I want to make sure I cover the entire opening, but again, I'm trying not to let it get too thick so that it doesn't take too long to dry. So what's cool about it is that not only does the paste give texture, but depending on like the motions you use with your tools, you can give it even more texture, like those swipes that I did there and here. Okay, just push a little bit in there. See what it's doing so far? All right, we're gonna add just a couple of more. I think I'll do one right here. So let me scoop up a little more. I'm just turning it so I can hold it in place better with my um, fingers here and here. Again, you could certainly tape it down. If I'm being honest, I'm just lazy. I'm just adding my paste and getting those side to side strokes. Lift off. I like it so far. And then I'm going to do one more down here that's kind of flowing off a little bit. So I want that progression of movement to go from the top left to the bottom right. And hold it like that. Get the area covered. Uh, I should have turned it the other way. It's a little more natural. Make sure it goes down all the way there. There's so much that you can do with this. And like I said, if I had actually Googled or looked up some videos on how to use this, I might have different tips for you. But what I've got is just an authentic first time use tips and tricks. So let me get this out of the way so it doesn't stick to my project. Um, I'm gonna close this just because I don't want it to dry out at all. So, I've got my flow of hearts. So just like our color goes from lighter to darker, we've got that movement of the hearts, top left to bottom right. Now you can take a heat tool and just heat set the embossing paste a little bit. You can, can you see how this heart right here, how that's a little bit thicker in that top left? So that'll take just a little bit more time to dry than the others. And before I would mail this or whatever, I'd probably leave it set overnight. I'm just, that's all the heat I'm going to put on it right now because I think it'll be good for what I'm trying to do here. Um, okay, let's pull in that um, thick card base. And I think what I'm going to do, this, this is a lot of improvising, so learn with me here. Um, I'm going to apply my adhesive around the perimeter leaving a little bit of space because this layer is not going to go right to the edges. But I'll put my adhesive on like this and then set this into it simply because I don't want to flip it over and put the adhesive on the back because I'm not sure how it would smash this because it's not totally dry. I hope you can see all that texture on there. It is pretty cool. Okay, so this is just going to get centered on here and I'll kind of push around the hearts a little bit and make sure it's secure. Now this one, you can see, I didn't get it quite as thick. And so you see more of that berry burst coming through. So that's interesting too, just to know if you do it really thin, you're gonna see that color underneath. Okay, to finish this off, I am going to take some, um, this is from the Sheer Ribbon Combo Pack. Let me cut that at an angle, good. Um, this is the bubble bath. And let's see, I just want it to be about the width of the card. I think this will be good. And I'm going to just take my adhesive and set some right on here. Hopefully you can see that strip of adhesive. And I'm just going to kind of loop the ribbon 
can set it down into it. And then I'll put a little bit more right on top and press this side in. Okay. And then if you remember, I had the nested essentials, tiny little piece. And I'm using this um, stamp set. It's called So Sincere. And this greeting just popped out at me. You're in my heart and prayers. And I just thought with our little homemade heart mask, that was a perfect greeting to use on this card. So I'm going to pull in Berry Burst ink and just ink up that greeting. And then we will add that. Let me close this so I don't make any more of a mess. Um, I'm going to add this to the card with some Stampin' Dimensionals. I am so curious to see what Julie and Shannon and Brandy came up with because... Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if they have more. I know Brandy. She's the one who chose this, so I know she's got more experience. I don't know for sure about Julie and Shannon, but I think it's just fun to do something new and see what we come up with. So this is what I have for you today on my try it, play with it, experiment um, afternoon with embossing paste. So you can, um, how I applied the color first and then the embossing paste, I was playing. This was my very, very first attempt. I did the embossing first and sponged or uh, blended with the blending brush. I just went right over the white and I decided I didn't like this as well. It's kind of fun to know that you can do it, but I like the way that these pop off the um, cardstock there. So this is what I have for you today, that progression of color, the movement of the hearts, the really well tied together uh, greeting there, and of course, that texture and depth of the embossing paste. I hope you learned something. I'd love to hear um, if this is new to you or if you've played with it before, what kinds of things you've made. So be sure to click through to the other videos, vote on your favorite with that thumbs up, and thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.